Okay, so hopefully by now, this horizontal circle is somewhat very familiar already. You know, oh, we need to resolve and find a force component that is directed towards the center of the circle, aka centripetal force. Okay, and it's not a new drawing to you by now. But I want you to notice something. Number one, the tension in the string or the lift or the normal force on the bank track is always the same. Can I try again? You see, uh, the length of the arrow never changed one. Life is good. Life is great. But today, or in this video, we are going to look at what happens or when we twist the circle such that it rotates on a vertical plane. So let's look at how the free body diagram could look like. Okay, so what you see here is a vertical circle. I'm going to start playing and I want you to look at the forces acting on this uh, object. So this object is going to spin in the vertical plane. So how do I know this is in a vertical plane? Because the weight is pointing downwards. Okay, so it's going to turn around this vertical circle. When I say vertical, I mean in with respect to gravitational field okay so in this case right if we spin a circle vertically let's look at the forces well wow, look at this tension keep changing there increase decrease increase decrease okay so let me reset this and i ask you to observe where do you think the where is the forces the highest and where is the forces the lowest so i noticed that somewhere here at the bottom most position, this force is the highest. And if I restart this again, and I go to the highest most position, this force is the lowest. So try again. Ah. Here, somewhere here is the highest, around 40 something. And then up here is the lowest, 2 point something, can be 1 point something also. All right, so this one is a little bit more challenging than the previous one because the previous one, yes, it was quite hard because you need to determine the center of the circle and imagine a horizontal circle. But this vertical circle, the forces will change, eh? the tension will be different. So if you are thinking, how on earth can the tension be different and how and why is this happening? So you could, if you are free, if you have, take a string and tie it to an object or maybe if you have a yo-yo, that's even better. And try to execute the move where you move the yo-yo in a vertical circle and feel the sensation of tension in the string. Okay, now I'm going to show you a video of Miss Ellie doing it to see how it looks like. Now I'm going to use one of my favorite toys, a yo-yo, to do a throw around the world. Here's how it looks like. Look at that, the string turn and the yo-yo is traveling in a nice circle. Now, if the string breaks at any point, the yo-yo will definitely fly away. Don't want to travel in a circle. But my question for you is this. At which point is the tension the greatest? At which point is the tension the least? You see the string? Different tension, you know. But where is greatest? Where is least? Okay. All right. Right, so you've watched the video and hopefully you have taken a yo-yo or an object to try to swing it around for yourself to try. Now we're going to think about the question that Miss Ellie asked us just now. Where's the tension the highest? And where's the tension the low lowest? And why? So first things first, we got to draw a circle. We're going to draw a circular path. Because at the end of the day, we are studying circles, right? So the reason why we separate case one and case two, vertical and horizontal circles is Number one, when it comes to the vertical circle, weight comes into play. If you think about all your horizontal drawing like this one, mg is like, meh, I don't care that you need centripetal force. I'm not going to contribute. But in the vertical circle, because we are rotating it vertical, so weight comes into play. Or in other words, depending on where your object is, where your yo-yo is, the weight will be able to help maybe provide some centripetal force. Okay, but before we start, we're going to first things first. What we do, ah, uh, yeah, we find the center of the circle, uh, my friends. So the center of the circle is here, C. Mm. Okay, that will help give us a reference point. Next thing, I'm going to draw the yo-yo 
or the object at different different positions along the circular part. I'm going to draw it here. I'm going to draw it here. Okay. And I should probably also draw it here and here. And because we are doing physics, right? So physics, we generally only care about extreme situations, uh, meaning we want to know where the tension is maximum and where the tension is minimum. All the other in between are uh, some random angle here, don't really care one. Okay, so in this case, first things first, I'm going to draw mg. Okay, so everybody should know that weight is pointing downwards all. mg of the ball is all pointing downwards. No problem. Okay. So we determine the center of the circle. We draw and label the forces. Is this the only force? No la miss. You tie this to a string what? Oh yeah, we had a string. So I'm going to represent the string in a purple color line. And the direction of tension must always be directed for pulling, right? So we have this mg that is pointing downwards. But what about tension in the string? Tension in the string also pull down. Okay, so I'm going to change this to red. Tension in the string is also pulling downwards. What color should I use? Orange. Lah. Okay, tension in the st string will pull down this way. This is T. I say this is position 1. Now I call this T1. Okay. Tension in the string must be pulling upwards. So T is used for pulling. So this one would be our T2. I'm going to draw it here. This is T2. Okay, so tension used for pulling. If I draw the free body diagram, okay, so just to make it like super clear, I'm going to draw out the forces acting on the object here. There is mg pointing downwards and then there is tension T pulling it downwards T1 because the rope is used for pulling. Whereas at the bottom here, this bottom one, mg is obviously the same because gravity is one and only mg. Okay, hang on, let me... All right, so mg is pulling downwards, but tension T is pulling upwards because again, string is for pulling. Ma. Notice that I draw T2 as larger or longer than T1. Okay, so a few things here that you should take, pay attention to is, number one, tension has to be used for pulling only. So for practice purposes, if let's say you want to draw tension in the other position, you could say tension is somewhat here, kind of, kind of lah. But not really, like it's actually at an angle upwards, not in syllabus. Okay, so we only concern ourselves with position one. We don't really care about two, but we care about three. So this is position three, this is position one, this is position four. Okay, so in this case, right, you will notice that um, the direction of T is flip and the direction, I mean, the magnitude is different. So here is where people get confused. They be like, uh, miss. I know the unbalanced force will provide centripetal force, correct. I know that the centripetal directed towards the center force must be pointing towards the center of the circle. Okay, so to make my life easier, I'm going to draw the direction of the center of the circle. So center of the circle is here, right? So this is actually your C. Meaning to say, right, this is the direction of your acceleration. This is the direction of acceleration. This is the direction of centripetal force. This is also the direction of the net force. So the unbalanced net force is the one that provides centripetal force. So the direction of centripetal force or net force is here. Which is why I can say for position 1, my net force is equal to mg plus t1 but also net force provides the centripetal force so i will equate this with maybe a centripetal force equation 
mv square over r okay where m is the mass of the object and v is the tangential speed v and r is the radius of the circle okay let me mark out all the values for you okay so i find it uh, useful especially if you're a student the equation is very new and not familiar to you whenever you write or you ask yourself okay okay what is r what is m what is v tangential velocity okay so you feel a little bit more confident when you write it so this will be mg plus t1 means they are both pointing downward leh. it doesn't matter so in this scenario the sign convention that I use is going down is positive. Why I choose going down positive? Ah? Eh, because all the forces going down ah, and directed towards the center of the circle. So net force is directed center, center of the circle. Acceleration also center of the circle. Okay, this one seems straightforward enough. I can find T1 if I want to or if I have enough information. T1 here will be equal to mv square over r minus mg. Kind of small. What about T2, Jer? What about T2? Okay, good question. Let's think about T2. Let's do this thing again, but for position 2. Okay, so for position 2, okay, you come down first. Means the direction is different. So, must minus, correct, must minus. But do we take T2 minus mg? Or do we take mg minus T2? I still don't know. How are? Uh? Well, you want, if you want your life to be easy, for easy life, direct everything towards the center which is why the first things of first order of business when you see something moving in a circle where's the center where's the center go find the center okay so once you know where the center is you know that the direction of net force must be here now you tell me you think to yourself where should i direct the positive direction sign convention okay, i'm gonna write here this is the sign convention So what should the sign convention for this one be? Easier if you take upward as positive. You also may be thinking, Miss, can like that one? Ah? Can. You take the direction of the net force or the direction towards the center of the circle as positive. You can continue to take downward as positive, but you will get the same equation just multiply everything by negative which is still the same equation okay so my general rule is i will take the direction of the net force or if you have done as the direction of acceleration so acceleration also this direction no correct centripetal acceleration as positive so when i use net force the net force here will now be equal to t2 minus mg repeat the process again mv square over r is equal to t2 minus mg so i find here t2 as mv square over r plus mg Ooh, what does this mean well number one hopefully it's very obvious by now that one of the tension is bigger than the other because if you look at these two expression, one is minus and then one is plus. So of course this one is bigger. Lah. Okay. If you decide to take downward as negative, then your net force also must have a negative in front. Because the net force is directed towards the center, upwards. So to save your brain some headache, always take the direction of net force as positive. We will normally do that in normal dynamics paper. In AS. So it's just, it just makes sense to continue this, take the direction of acceleration as positive. Okay, so in this case, hopefully the sign convention is clear enough. If they're pointed in the same direction, you add them together. I'm taking the downward direction as positive because the net force is pointed downwards. Because I want to put positive here, you know, my friend. <laughs> okay, so here... It's the same idea. I take upward as positive because, again, I want to put a positive beside the net force here. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Miss Lee, for showing us the math and the forces behind this vertical circle. So going back to the question earlier, 
Where is this string likely to break and why? Let us conclude by summarizing these three, what you call, three observations or three facts about this vertical circle. Number one, which one is likely to be bigger, T1 or T2? Turns out that, well, let's see, where, where can we write this thing? Let's zoom out a bit more. Okay, here. Ah, okay, observation number one. So, tension at the bottom down here have to help fight against gravity. Oh. They're fighting each other. So, tension 2, T2, is greater than T1. So, the string ah, will be very tight when the object is down here. So, let's label that out. So, this point, oops, wrong color. Uh, this point is most likely to break. So if you will say, hmm, I keep turning the circle faster and faster, the breaking point will probably be right at the bottom or somewhere in the lower half. If you exceed the maximum force that your string can withhold, remember you go past a certain point, you break. Okay. Now what about the other point up there? Hmm. Second observation. If you swing this yo-yo too small, at some point, your tension force will go to zero. <gasps> then it might drop down. So you need a certain minimum speed in order for this object to go one full circle. At the top, ah, so we write this out. If you want to find the minimum speed, for minimum speed, that would be right at the top of the circle. So for minimum speed, the tension at the top must be zero. If you cannot, I mean, you cannot go less than zero. So that would be right up here. If you want to make a perfect circle, at least, at least, you must reach the top. So this will be uh, T top, tension here, zero, and you will need a minimum speed to get there. At least. Now the last observation relates to the lower part. Okay, we mentioned if, you're, if you're, your string want to break, probably it's going to be on the lower side. So observation number three. If you go too fast, you swing it too fast, tension get higher and higher and higher, and at some point, it breaks. So that's what we call a maximum speed. So if ever you, they ask you about where the maximum speed will be, or what, how to find the maximum speed, not where, how to find maximum speed, you need to consider the lowest point, which is probably where the breaking point is going to be. So at that point, the tension at the bottom will be the maximum force it can with well we can withstand if you go any bigger break now <laughs> and you break where will the string fly mm, that's for you to think about in the past year question okay so being able to describe these three facts is pretty valuable already in fact most past year questions will go until there lah. they won't go too far into equation but if you are not convinced of any of these three statements and you're like, Miss, actually why on the mean speed? What is the mean speed? How do we calculate the mean speed? If you are curious to know more, check out the bonus video right after this that dives into a little bit of further physics on more equations. How do you find the equation for tension at every point on this circle? What you see here on the right is just up there and down there. What about in between? Ah, that's for you to find out if you're interested. So that's all for this video. We will see you in the next one.